Well, hello, my name is Emilio from Digital Byte Computing. Uh, I love technology, I hope you love technology. Today we're gonna to be talking about something that is very near and dear to my heart, and that is how unrealistic movies and TV shows are when it comes to portraying what the IT people do, what the computer systems do, what hacking actually looks like. We're gonna be talking about that today, so hopefully you find this interesting. Uh, before we do chat about that, please remember to subscribe, clicking on the bell to be kept up to date with everything that Digital Byte Computing, my channel, is releasing. You've maybe watched, I'm sure you have watched, uh, many a movies, many a TV show, where they're uh, doing things on a computer and all of a sudden, oh, they've hacked into the top CIA over a small little laptop and it's only taken them five seconds and there's this beautiful graphical user interface. It looks so flash and it was so easy. And you don't even have to have a lot of IT skills either. All you need is like some guy that's also, he's, all, he's, the, he's the, the, the doctor, he's the spy, and he's also a computer expert and he can hack into everything. So we're gonna be covering my top 10. We're gonna be covering some movies, some TV shows, what they did in those movies and TV shows, what frustrated me so much, and what it actually looks like in the real world. Make sure you stay till the very end because at the very end, we're gonna be talking about a TV show that I absolutely love, that I find is the most accurate uh, when it comes to portraying what IT professionals do and what it actually looks like on an IT system to be able to go and do something um, very, very close to what we do in the real world. Number 10 is Terminator 2, a great action film from the early 1990s. Of course, the Terminator franchise is huge. This particular one, you've got John Connor, you've got time travel, you've got Arnold Schwarzenegger doing his thing, and you've got the Terminator who's trying to get John Connor um, before he changes things in the future. It's crazy, crazy cool film. Uh, one of my favorites. And there's this awesome scene where John Connor, close to the start of the movie, hacks into an ATM with this old school device. He's running an Atari portfolio with this sort of credit card imitation device, slots it into that ATM, does a few things on the actual computer keyboard thing, and then it spits out money. The great thing is that this device is really from the 80s, and look, maybe it's possible, maybe it's not. ATMs are pretty secure. Is it real? Eh. Number nine is Fast and the Furious 8. There's this crazy scene. We've got Charlize Theron and her team of hackers essentially hack into a whole bunch of cars. Essentially, there's this briefcase with some nuclear codes. There's a convoy of cars that are sort of taking it. And uh, she and her team of hackers uh, just hack into cars that are on the street, cars that are parked. They're not even turned on. Uh, they all hack into it and they all start doing their own thing. And they're all, all almost like uh, zombie cars that are being controlled by this team of amazing hackers. How do they do this, you ask? Well, I've got no idea how they do this. So many different brands of cars, models of cars, older cars, newer cars, cars that are not even turned on. Uh, how are they controlling them if they're not even turned on? I mean, are these cars broadcasting over, over Wi-Fi, over Bluetooth? I mean, I know that cars nowadays have got that stuff, but how are you getting in? I mean, there's passwords, there's encryption, um, there's all these security measures. It's very challenging to do this and to be able to do it to a whole group of cars and sort of control them in this zombie sort of plague fashion. Yeah, I don't know. Number eight is Swordfish. Uh, awesome movie, Hugh Jackman. He's essentially a spy hacker sort of guy uh, and he's been tasked to steal a whole bunch of money. This movie has a lot of technology references and a lot of sort of different hacks that take place. But your typical cliche in movies is that you've got Hugh Jackman hacking into systems and organizations super, super easy, very fast, super quick. Like you're on the keyboard only for a minute and you're in. Uh, and the other great thing is the cliche in a lot of movies that you've got this beautiful user interface. You've got this beautiful GUI. It has 3D imaging. Um, well, if you're hacking, you're generally using some sort of a uh, command line or something similar to that. It doesn't look anything like a console window that a real hacker would use. It's all pretty and uh, it's really for the movie goers to enjoy uh, what a hacker may be doing 
but it's not really reality. Number seven is the TV show Arrow. Uh, cool show, a lot of seasons. The main guy is a vigilante. It's done by DC Comics. He's a billionaire and he's got a team of people to sort of fight crime, including this one girl, Felicity, who is the IT guru. Uh, she does the hack. She does all of this sort of cool tech stuff. Some things you can sort of go, well, that's sort of legitimate, even though they are using the fancy graphics as well. There's this one episode, right, where you've got a, a hacker who's trying to get in. They're all there trying to stop him from hacking. And then all the computers, there's like sparks flying everywhere. There's sparks flying out of systems. I mean, if somebody's getting into a computer and they want to bring it down, you're going to in install some sort of malware, some remote control software, something like that. If you want to bring it down, there's going to be smoke. Perhaps you can burn something inside of it. You over, you know, you make the processor just go really, really hot. Um, but sparks, like uh, I've never seen sparks, like a lot of sparks, like fireworks sort of sparks in this room. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not so sure about the sparks. Number six is live free or die hard. The Die Hard films are awesome. One of my favorites, Die Hard 1, classic. Watch it every single Christmas. This is one of the newer ones, so they've sort of brought it into the modern age, and they've got a guy who, uh, who's just a, a typical IT geek, nerd, hacker sort of guy, um, and uh, works alongside Bruce Willis to sort of go and hack a whole bunch of things. And of course, it's going to hack into a whole bunch of systems to, to sort of be able to stop the baddies. Um, but again, the wonderful scene uh, where he's using an old school sort of Nokia phone and he hacks into these major systems over a Nokia phone. It's not even a smartphone. It's like this old school sort of thing. How does he do it? Number five is NCIS. NCIS or really any of these sort of cop crime uh, sort of shows. Hackers trying to get in and then everybody's just surrounding a computer and they're all just stomping on that keyboard. The screen's going crazy, all these weird graphics, and it's like pandemonium, but they're all just typing really fast onto, I don't know what they're doing. It is the most unrealistic thing you've ever seen in your life. Number four is the movie, The Core. Very cool film about uh, the Earth's core has stopped spinning. Oh, you gotta save the Earth, otherwise there could uh, be a big pandemonium, right? So they build this device, a whole bunch of scientists, they wanna to go to the center of the Earth uh, to be able to restart that core. So there's this scene, right, where um, this guy, he's a hacker, again, they're all hackers, they're all expert people, that they do certain things which I don't understand how they do it. He grabs a chewing gum wrapper, like the metal, the metal, also like a sort of aluminium sort of wrapper of a chewing gum. Uh, he sort of folds it, and then he does a little noise from it, into a phone and then all of a sudden this guy gets uh, free long distance phone calls for the rest of his life because he's done this frequency with the chewing gum wrapper. I'll let that just sit with you for a while. Number three is The Matrix. I love The Matrix. The Matrix is one of the greatest films of all time. Probably one of my favorites of all time. It is an awesome film. You've got Neo. He's living in the world that he thinks is real, but it's not real, it's the Matrix. And then Morpheus makes him realize this, and then he goes to the real world, and then he finds that the Matrix is a simulation. Very cool, made a lot of people go, am I living in the Matrix? You know, maybe you're still wondering, is this the Matrix? A lot of hacking, and Neo, of course, being a hacker himself, part-time hacker, uh, his alias is Neo, of course. Um, but then, of course, there's the scene where, where Trinity hacks in. She's doing a command line, um, but she's bringing down a whole power grid system. Now, um, that's on and it's in, in on its own pretty challenging, but the great thing is that the power grid system is on the internet. It's exposed out to the internet. Nowadays, a lot of these sort of systems are not directly connected to the internet. They're generally on some sort of an internal network, segregated and separated from the rest of your network that it could be exposed out to the internet. But great film, small little things, not a biggie. Yeah. Number two is an awesome film called Enemy of the State starring Will Smith. There's this really important guy uh, up in the government who kills another important guy up in the government. And then Will Smith gets framed for it. There's this crazy scene where Jack Black being this awesome hacker guy, he, uh, he's helping Will Smith and some other guys uh, reviewing to, to, like to review the video footage. And you can zoom in and sort of see what's going on. But this is insane. He can actually not only zoom in, he can spin the camera around. Like, hang on, the camera's here, but somehow he's able to spin the camera around, focus, zoom in, enhance. Enhance is one of those things, right? How do you enhance an image that is like super pixelated already? The pixels aren't there. Like you can't enhance something that doesn't have a pix like doesn't have enough pixels. How do they make the camera move around? It's not like there was cameras all the way around in this store. 
it just blows my mind. Like Hollywood, how, how, how does this even, how does this even work? Number one, Independence Day. Film about aliens coming to Earth. They're gonna wipe out humanity. You've got uh, Will Smith again, and you've got uh, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum being a tel telecommunications guy. He's a bit of an IT guy as well. The big alien ships that sort of come all around the cities, around the world, all the major cities. And then you've got like the mothership. And then he's like, oh, we can infect a virus or a cold as he calls it onto the mothership. So they fly this ship out into space and they get into this mothership. They release a virus onto the ship onto the mothership, but he can get in over some sort of a network. Wife, is it Wi-Fi, is it Bluetooth? How, how's he connecting into the interface of the alien craft? And then once he connects, how does he install this malware? I mean, how does he know what operating system they're running? Now, let's think about this. You've got an alien race, right? That is coming to earth. All these ships, they're far superior to us technologically probably a hundred years in the future or more, who knows? But they forgot to install an antivirus on their mothership. Uh, they then plant a big nuclear bomb inside, the, inside the, the alien ship and they escape just in time as it blows up. So a hacker essentially saved the day, saved the whole world really. So they're the 10 films. And of course, in reality, things are not like that. Nowadays, most people are going to be using, we'll say most hackers, security people, pen testers, you know, a lot of people are going to be running maybe Windows, but most hackers, pen testers run a version of Linux. Kali Linux being probably the most popular. There's a whole heap of tools. You're going to be running commands on a Linux uh, CLI, command line interface. Uh, you've got tools like Wireshark to be able to sniff the network. You've got packet sniffers. You've got key loggers. You've got all this sort of cool gear that actually a uh, real life hacker slash pen tester would use. They're not going to be uh, fancy graphics and doing enhancing on a image that is fully pixelated. Hmm. Hey, we promised that we would talk about uh, a TV show that I love. I'm sure if you guys are into technology, uh, which I hope that you are, even if you're not and just tuning in, uh, a show that is so close to the reality is a show called Mr. Robot. It's been around for a little while. There are four seasons of, of this show. It's about a hacker, a guy that um, he just goes, he, he's employed by a security company and he's sort of like a part-time hacker doing a whole bunch of stuff in the background. And the great thing is that the creators of the show uh, work and have consulted very closely with real life security and technology systems engineers, sort of people, architects, uh, to make sure that the, that the show is as accurate as possible. Perhaps you've got some movies or TV shows that you have watched that, uh, that you've seen this, you've seen this crazy phenomenon of unrealistic, unrealistic, uh, unrealism that word. Um, let me know what some of those perhaps are. But that's it for now. Uh, like this video. And as always, it helps me, it helps you to be kept up to date with what's going on uh, by subscribing to my channel, Digital Bike Computing, and keeping up to date by clicking on that bell so that you are notified when new videos are released. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this again. We will see you next time. See ya.